Today's lesson will be covering conversions and we're going to be looking at conversions in the imperial system. We're going to look at conversions from metric to imperial. We're going to be looking at conversions in temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit as well as converting solids to liquids. So what we're going to be covering first is the imperial units. Now let's have a look at our different units that we have in the imperial system. In the lengths, we have 12 inches, which is equal to one foot. Now, just to give you some sort of idea, they, a foot is about your meter long ruler. So a foot is about 30 centimeters. Now, three feet is equal to one yard, and a yard is a little bit shorter than a meter. A mile is equal to 1,769 yards, and a mile is 1.6 uh, kilometers. Let's look at our mass unit. In mass we have ounces and pounds and 16 ounces is equal to a 1 pound. And it's just over 2 pounds, in fact 2.2 pounds is equal to a kilogram. 14 pounds is equal to a stone and a ton is equal to 2,240 pounds. Please write this is a metric ton, sorry a, an imperial ton. A metric ton is spelled with a double N-E. Our imperial volume units are pints, quarts, gallons and fluid ounces. A pint is equal to 16 fluid ounces. A quart is equal to 2 pints and a quart is a little bit less than a, than a litre. And then 4 quarts is equal to a gallon. And I'm sure you all know that in America they measure the petrol in a gallons and it's about 4.5 litres per gallon. Now let's have a look at some examples of where we actually do some conversions. The first one we're going to do is we're going to convert some lengths. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert 2,3 miles to yards. So we need to take 2,3 miles and we need to see what, whether we have a link between miles and yards. And here you can see we do. One mile is equal to 1,769 yards. So to convert 2,3 miles, we have to multiply it by 1,769. Now, if we use our calculator to do that, we get 4068.7. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So it's 4068,7. And don't forget to put your units. We converted this to yards. And you can write YD or you can write YDS. Right, next let's convert 2,3 miles to feet. Now, we don't have miles to feet, but we have just con converted yards, sorry, miles into yards. And yard is equal to 3 feet. And multiply that by 3, and that would then change it into feet. So it's 12,206,1. 12,206,1 feet and FT you can write like that or in fact you can for feet you can also use a single stripe like that. Okay now let's convert this to inches. Now again we've got to go from mile we'll go all the way to inches. Our answer that we've got here is in feet so in order to save time we're actually going to start with that answer. So we're going to go 12,206,1 feet we're going to multiply it by 12 because one foot has got 12 inches and we've still got our answer that we've got on here so we're going to go multiply by 12 and convert that again to a decimal and it's going to give you 146473 146473 comma 2 we can write inches or in fact you could put two little stripes like that that is also the abbreviation for inches Okay, now let's have a look at some conversions for mass. Right, convert 3,400 ounces, first of all, to pounds. So let's have a look here, ounces to pounds. There are 16 ounces to one pound. So to be able to convert 3,400 ounces, we're going to have to take it, we're going to have to divide it by our 16 ounces. We're going to need our calculator for this again. Let's clear that. So it's going to be 3,400 divided by 16, and that's 212,5. So here we have 212,5, and this is pounds, and a pound is LB, or you can put S for your plural. 
Okay, next let's convert it to stones. Right, now a stone is equal to 14 pounds. So if we take the pounds that we've got here, which is 212,5, and we go and divide uh, that by 14, because 14 pounds in a stone, we can do that. We've, got our, we've still got our answer there from the last one. So we're going to go divide by 14, convert it to a decimal, and it gives us 15,178. Let's round it off to two decimal places. That's going to be 15,18. So it's 15,18. And this answer is in stone. There is no abbreviation for stone, so you have to actually write it out. Okay, next example. Let's convert 5,700 pounds to tons. So, yeah, we've got our conversion here. There are 2,240 pounds per ton. So we're going to take our number of tons. Okay, and we are going to divide it by 2,240, which is the number of pounds in one ton. Definitely can't do that in our heads. So, 5,700, divide that by 2,240. And it gives us an answer of 2,546. Again, let's round off to two decimal places. That's normally your instruction. So it's going to be 2,54 tons. So it's 2,54 tons. Okay. Now let's convert 5,2 tons to pounds. Now, there are 2,240 pounds per ton. So when we do this calculation, we have to multiply. So we're going to go 5,2, and we're going to multiply it by 2,240. On our calculator, 5.2 times 2,240, and that gives us 11,648. So it's 11,648 pounds. Okay, let's now have a look at some problems to do with conversions with volume. Convert 22 pounds to quarts. So let's have a look here. One quart is equal to two pounds. So if we want to know how many quarts a pint is, we're going to have to take our 22 and we have to going to have to divide by two. Okay, two pounds is one quart. Twenty-two divided by two is eleven. So this gives us eleven quarts. Now we want to convert twenty-two pounds to gallons. Okay, here we are. There are four quarts to one gallon. We've already converted this into quarts, so let's have let's use that conversion over there. So we've got twenty-two pounds gives us eleven quarts. So eleven quarts we've got to go and divide by divided by 4. So if we do 11 divided by 4, 2,75. So this is 2,75 gallons. And again, you can't go and abbreviate it to G because remember our G stands, our G stands for grams. Now let's convert 22 pounds to fluid ounces. 22 pints. Here's our pint to fluid ounces. There's 16 fluid ounces to one pint. So we're going to take our 22 pints. We're going to multiply it by 16. And our calculator, 22 multiplied by 16 gives us 352. So it's 352 fluid ounces. You'll notice I always like to make a little a little L that looks like that instead of an L like that rather than an L like that. I don't like it because this, this over here, one tends to confuse with the one. So I prefer it in milliliters or in fluid ounce, any of those, I always use a, a cursive L that looks like that. Next, we're going to be doing at conversions between the metric and imperial systems. A flask holds 1,7 liters of coffee. How many pints of coffee does the flask hold? Now, I like to, to set this question out using, using a, a ratios. Okay, so there's our conversion that we've given. So what I do is I set it up. We have liters to pints, and then on this side, we're going to have liters to pints as well. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put each of what we've been given underneath the correct one. So they tell us that one liter is equal to 1,76 pints. And we know that the pot holds 1,7 liters. And we want to know how many pints it holds. So we don't know what it is. So let's put some variable in here. And being a mathematician, I like to use an X. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to set up an equation. And the way to set up your equation is to have the unknown on top always. So on this right-hand side, I'm going to put x divided by 1,7. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to do them in the same order. So here I'm going to go 1,76 divided by 1. Now, when you've got a single fraction on this side and one on this side, the easiest way to go and to, to solve it is to what we call cross multiply, which is not very good maths. And what we're actually doing is we are finding the lowest common denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these. So we're going to go 1 times x on the left-hand side, and then on this side we're going to go 1,76 times 1,7. So 1 times x is, of course, x. And well, let's do that part on our calculator. So it's going to be 1.76 multiplied by 1.7. And that gives us 2,92. So it's going to be 2,992. And that is pounds. OK. Let's now look at converting degrees Fahrenheit into degrees, degrees Celsius. Now, with this as well, they're always going to give you what your conversion factor is. It may not be in this exact format, though. So we want to know what the, what the degree centigrade is going to be. And they also tell us that to correct to the nearest 10 degrees. So we must remember to look at this at the end. So what 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's going to have to go in the place of F over here. So open your bracket. Here we've got 350 degrees. We have to subtract 32 degrees from that, and we have to divide that answer by 1,8. Okay, so doing that on the calculator, 350 minus 32, we can get that answer first, and then we're going to divide that by 1.8, and that gives us an answer of 176,7. So it's 176, it's in fact 6 recurring. But now remember they told us here to the nearest 10 degrees. So if we round this off, the nearest 10 degrees is going to be 180 degrees and that is going to be in Celsius. So there's your conversion, that's what you would have to put your oven to. Another conversion that we sometimes have to do is converting solids to liquids. So, for example, you have a box has dimensions 120 centimeters by 300 centimeters by 430. How many liters of liquid can the box hold? Now, here are your basic conversions. One milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. A liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. And a kiloliter is a cubic meter. So, just just picture this amount over here. One cubic centimeter is basically a little box. 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter. My drawing's not so good, yeah. Okay, so that's basically what your box looks. So if each of these sides over here is 1 centimeter, then the contents of this box, what can go into this box over here, what goes inside here, is going to be only 1 milliliter. Okay, let's have a look at the answer to this question. So what we're going to do first is we're going to first find the volume of the box in in cubic centimeters. Now, volume you should remember is length times breadth times height. So we're going to substitute our values in. So we're going to have 120 multiplied by 300 multiplied by 430. And that is going to give us an answer of 120 times 300 times 430. 1548 with four zeros. 1548 one, with four zeros. Four zeros. Okay. Now this is in cubic centimeters. So if we have a look, if we have a look up here, one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So if we're going to change this into milliliters, we have look one, two, three. Just want to make a little bit of a break there and a little bit of a break there. So it's going to be fifteen million four hundred and eighty thousand 
milliliters. Okay, and what do we do to go from milliliters up to liters? Remember, it was King Henry died a lousy death called measles. So we're going to go one, two, three up. We have to divide that by a thousand. So if we divide this by a thousand, it's going to be 15,480 liters.